Welcome back, Seth Bling here. In this video, I'm going to go behind the scenes on Blocks vs. Zombies, my tower defense map, and show you how all the things that you can purchase with points were created. So that's the barriers, the cannons, and the firing towers over here on the sides. Uh, this is part of a series where I go behind the scenes on Blocks vs. Zombies and just show you how it was all built. Uh, so I'm going to first demonstrate all these things uh, and, and show you what they do, and then I'm going to go... Like I said, behind the scenes, show you the circuitry, show you all the stuff about how it was created. So first, let's go over the barriers. Uh, now you'll notice there's the end stone on the side and the cave on the top to help orient you. And then, of course, the colors here match the colors in the, in the, in the battlefield here. Uh, and you press a button to purchase the barrier. It costs 10 points. Now, if you don't have enough points, like right now I don't have any points, it'll tell you you need at least 10 points to purchase that. The barriers are actually the only thing that will do that. If I stand up here and try and purchase a tower, it doesn't tell me anything. And if I try and purchase a cannon without any points, it also doesn't tell me anything. Uh, that is purely out of laziness. <laughs> I There's no reason that it needs to be like that. I just uh, I only implemented it for the barriers, and it would take some circuitry redesigns to make it work for the towers and for the cannons. So going back to the barriers, I need points to purchase it. I'm just going to go ahead and cheat myself some points. Uh, there's a points objective in the scoreboard that you can use uh, that, that keeps track of the points. And basically, it, the type of the objective is total kill count. So every time you get a kill, that point that point total is going to go up. Okay, so the now that I have points, I can go ahead and purchase a barrier. If I press the button, it'll create the barrier there. You'll see a bunch of shiny stuff happen there. And I'll go over kind of what's going on there in a bit. Uh, I can purchase barriers if I could press a couple at a time, kind of, as long as it's not too quick. I think it actually does break if you press them too fast. Uh, okay, so that's how you purchase barriers, and that's what it looks like when you get them. Uh, to purchase a firing tower, you stand on these pressure plates and shoot at the tower. And you have to, you have to hit a wooden button. And when you do that, it takes 10 points from you, and it turns on the firing tower. And that's going to shoot every 0 0.8 seconds, or I think 1.25 arrows per second. And that's just going to stay on for the rest of the game. Then here's the cannons over here. Now to make the cannons work, I'm going to have to set another variable. Uh, I'm going to have to set main player. This is something that's keep that's uh, that's used during the game. If you push the button, the start game button over here, it um, sets the game state to one and sets clears everyone's main player, and then it sets nearest player to be the main player. Anyway, it's just an important part of the game. Um, so now that I'm the main player, I can purchase this cannon. It, you don't need to be the main player to purchase the cannon, but you do need a main player on the on the bit field to make it work right. Now, once you purchase a cannon, it costs 30 points. It's free to fire it after the first time. So, uh, so after about 13 seconds, the light comes back on here, and you can fire it again. So there's just a 13 second cooldown. And notice there's a splash potion effect there. Uh, there's some particles. You won't see those in the ones farther away, so if I purchase this gray cannon, the gray cannon will fire but I'm too far away to see the particles because there's a 16 block limit on how far away you can see particles. So, well, certain particles anyway. The splash potion particles are like that. So that's what it looks like for all the different types. And the gray one's going to come back on, and now you can see the gray and green are ready to fire. Now there's no indicator for which cannons you've purchased or not. It's just kind of you have to remember, or if the lights are staying on for more than 13 seconds, you know that you haven't purchased them. Um, that is something that I could have done, but again, it was kind of laziness, and I didn't want to have more lights on the board, and because I thought it would make it more confusing. All right, so let's let's go over how these things work. Since the cannons, or sorry, since the firing towers are right here, I'm going to go over those. These are the only things for which the circuitry is right here. Actually, if you look under the map, there's almost no circuitry uh, actually here. It's all at the spawn at zero zero, pretty much. And there's a little bit, but mostly. So, okay, so what happens? I've, I stand on the pressure plate to shoot at the firing tower. Shoot at the wooden button here. You might ask yourself, why do I have to stand on the pressure plate? The answer is that when I was designing this, I had a problem. Uh, I wanted an easy way for people to pick which tower they wanted to purchase. I didn't want a big, huge board of buttons here because it'd be hard to tell which button, you know, on the wall over here corresponded to which tower out there. So I didn't want that. Um, so I decided having a button actually over the tower would be the easiest way of, of uh, connecting the player with the tower they want to 
they want to do. Um, but the only way to activate something remotely is to shoot a wooden button. Pretty much. So, if you just shoot a wooden button, though, there's no way to tell who shot the arrow and who to take the points from. Uh, I have some command blocks back here, and they're going to test for players and, and points and stuff, but there's no way to tell who actually fired it. So that's what the pressure plates over here are for. They set a scoreboard value for the player, and if I actually dig down under here, we can see what the command blocks are doing. When you step on the pressure plates, they set your purchase score to 10. And when you step off the pressure plates, it clears everyone's purchase score. So, or it clears everyone who has a purchase score of 10, it sets their score, purchase score to 0. So if you have a purchase score of 10, that means you're the one who wants to buy uh, a firing tower. So actually, you can stand here, and if somebody else shoots at the firing towers, that will also purchase it from your points. So you don't actually have to shoot the arrow yourself, technically. And if somebody is a better shot than you, maybe that's a good way to activate the, the towers that are further back here and are really hard to hit. What happens when you shoot the button? Oh, there's a signal. It comes back here. Uh, it triggers a little monostable circuit, so this one blinks on when you shoot it. Um, basically, there's a command block here that checks uh, if there's a player who has a purchase score of 10. So if they're standing on the pressure plates and they have at least 10 points, and it removes 10 points from that player. So that's what we'll see. It's uh, The scoreboard command here is scoreboard players remove, and it removes 10 points from them. So tries to remove 10 points from that player. If it does successfully do that, then it triggers this, uh, this comparator, which, um, which says that the player purchased the firing tower. Uh, and then it turns on a little RS NOR latch here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Let me back up a little bit. So there's a little RS NOR latch between um, this torch and this torch. And so that's what turns the redstone signal to the hoppers here off. Now these hoppers are these two hoppers here are just a timer. You'll see there's a minecart that goes back and forth between them and they're just pointing at each other. And they uh, they're a little timer that triggers the dispenser that actually fires the arrows and Oh my god, I need to get out of here. <laughs> ah, it's a little maze. Okay. And you'll see, so this is the dispenser that fires the arrows. There's a few hoppers leading to the chests. And these chests have giant stores of arrows. So if you, if I look over here, you'll see uh, it's starting to deplete the, the arrows from this hopper. From this chest, I mean. Now, the number of arrows in these chests is very large. And they can actually fire for about three to four hours straight. Uh, <laughs> so... It's not an infinite source of arrows in this firing tower, but unless you're playing the game for a very long time, because you know the tower isn't even going to be on all the time that you're playing, so three or four hours of actual firing time for the tower before it depletes. So uh, yeah, I mean that's pretty much how those towers work. Uh, now, when you when you want to when you want to purchase a barrier here, you'll notice there's no actual circuitry back here. It just sets your purchase score. So a scoreboard player is set, and it sets your purchase score. This one sets it to 6, this one sets it to 2, this one sets it to 1. We have 9 over here. And then it works similarly over here for the cannons. When you push the button to purchase the red cannon, it just sets your purchase score to 16. And there's some other circuitry that deals with that. And then over here, when you want the lights to turn on and off, uh, there is a clock over here, another one of these hopper clocks. I find these really useful because they never, ever, ever break. Uh, that is running some command blocks that are testing for a player with a score of green cannon equal to 1. So the score of green cannon is 1 when the cannon is ready to fire. And that's what turns the light on here uh, because there is a player with a score of green cannon equal to 1. That's me. And this one is off because the blue cannon score is 0 for all players. And that's what turns the, uh, the lights here on and off. So let me actually go to the, the spawn again and show you where all this circuitry is. I'm not going to go over to it go over it in too much depth because it's kind of complicated circuitry. So the cannons are controlled from, uh, I believe, from these things here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them because there are six cannons. And then the... The barriers can be purchased at these, and there's one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine of them. So one for each barrier. Now, how does this stuff work? Okay, well, there's another hopper clock over here for each of these. This one, I believe, is probably the cyan or I don't know which color this is. Let's see if I can figure it out. It says over here, so spawn cyan cannon. Uh, that's what this one is. And then this one is delete, or sorry, not cannon, uh, barrier. I'm talking about barriers right now. And then this one deletes the cyan barrier. Now, okay, so all this circuitry here, there's a little hopper timer. This checks for a player with a purchase score of one. Remember, that's what pressing the button by the barrier uh, console does. So when you, when you get that purchase score of one, it tries to purchase it. And if you don't have enough points, it's going to um, trigger this command block. If you do have enough points, it's going to take 10 points from you with this command block. And then it's going to purchase the barrier over here. It'll tell tell everyone that you purchased the cyan barrier with this command block, and this one will play that iron golem hit sound that indicates you purchased the barrier. And it's also going to trigger this structure spawner that actually spawns on the barrier. And that's that's all there is to purchasing it. You'll have to look at this in more detail if you want to see it. There's also this one which clears your purchase score so that you don't stay with the purchase score of one. It sets it back to zero. And whoops, and this guy, oh, that took the points from you. Um, so each of these is, is like an individual circuit for um, determining if you've purchased the barrier. There's a little RS NOR latch here that is this direction. It's powered on this side if you haven't purchased the barrier. Or no, if you have purchased the barrier, it's powered on this side. If you haven't purchased the barrier, it's powered on this side, I think. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then there's a reset line up above that, that resets that RS NOR latch. Um, when the game resets, uh, and that's actually triggered over here by a game state of 2, somebody has a game state score of 2, uh, that's going to reset the game, and it triggers a bunch of stuff. It actually clears all these, it clears everyone's inventories, um, it, it clears everyone's effects, that's what this one does, uh, it sets the time score to 0, the points to 0, difficulty 0, clears all the mobs that way, uh, teleports everyone to the gearing station. Anyway, it also triggers all of these deleters that deletes all the barriers. And so when the game is over, it's going to delete all those barriers. So that's how that's how those things work. Uh, yeah, that's how the barriers are purchased and deleted. Uh, the other thing over here is the cannons. So it works kind of similarly for the cannons. Uh, there is some circuitry over here. There's another hopper timer to check if there's a player with a purchase score of 11. If there is, then it tries to purchase the thing. Well, this clears their purchase score after a little bit of delay, uh, but it also tries to purchase them by taking 20, taking 30 points. If it's able to successfully take 30 points, then uh, it says, tells the world that they've purchased the cannon and it plays the iron golem sound. It's very similar. Um, and, and so it actually fires the cannon at that point. Now, the cannon fire works a little bit differently. It uses something that looks a lot like the structure spawner filter, but it's um, it's actually a little bit different. Uh, it, it spawns in the entities directly. So this entity here that gets spawned by this cart is the cactus sand entity that you see flying across, arcing across the the level. So when I when this cart spawns, it spawns in that falling sand entity that looks like cactus, and that's what creates the graphical effect. And then after a delay of a few seconds. Just as that falling sand entity hits the ground, uh, this one is time to spawn a splash potion of healing of level 9 on the ground. And that's what actually does the damage to the zombies. So this, this one over here is purely cosmetic. It's just so that you see a projectile flying across. And then this one is timed to actually deal the damage right as that one lands. And then there's a big uh, timer loop here, which causes the cooldown on, on the cannon. So you can't fire it again. And there's a little... There's a little latch here that gets set and reset um, on the on the cooldown, and that says whether or not you can or can't fire the, the cannon. And then over here is the thing that sets your score of purple sand cannon to zero, which turns that light off initially, and then it turns it back on... Where's that command block? Over here, maybe? Yeah, so this one is what turns on that, that light. So it's a purple, scan, purple cannon score to one when the purple cannon is ready to fire. So it's pretty dense circuitry here. I'm, again, I'm not going to go over it all in, in very much detail, but 
you can check it out for yourself. And then there's also another reset thing, reset lineup above here that resets the RS Norlatches uh, involved and and just resets it when the game is done. Checks for the game state of two again here. Uh, yeah, so again, the kind of complicated stuff. This this took me a while to build, and um, I didn't I didn't build each one of these individually. That would be insane. <laughs> I built one and then copied and pasted it. Basically, anything you see lots of copies of, uh, I I copied and pasted or ran a filter to generate. So. Don't worry, I didn't meticulously place all these blocks by hand. That's pretty much how those things work. I know it's kind of, I didn't go into a lot of detail because there's just a lot there. Um, but a lot of it that I didn't talk about, you can just fly around for yourself and expect the circuitry. And I encourage you to do that if you want to understand how this stuff works. And so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be making more of these videos and explaining how all this stuff, how all this stuff that I haven't talked about works. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.